Right. But architecture never conforms to you. <laughs> you conform to architecture. That's interesting. You fill the space up, mm. but the space doesn't adapt to meet you. But it can. Mm. Right? It does. So you sit in if you sit in like for example like a car, right? A car may be able to change the back, the, the way that you see adjust. Yeah. Or the seatbelt that tightens around you. It's true, yeah. Right. Spaces like an architecture space can adjust adapt to the human. My my argument so much here is not so much for moving architecture, it's more for adaptive yeah, 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 architecture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Moving is boring. No, but a, a, adaptive also means moving though. Like changing states from one one to another. There, there are different it, ways. It, it, it involves. I'm saying. Well, yeah, it's not necessarily about the moving the, the parts. Thing is that you, like, we have adaptive architecture, but it's it's on such a small scale. Your, for example, like your thermostat could mm-hmm. be a, a automated thermostat, and your architecture space has changed. Right. Without you doing anything, mm-hmm. your blinds could be automated as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And what if? But the thing is that the physical space doesn't change. Yeah. It never really does change. Sometimes mm-hmm. it does. Like some facade systems open and close. But right. Can you imagine like one day you just enter the room and as your body begins to go down into a sitting position, the floor rises up to meet mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. former chair, and you don't have to think it's about like it. A, it's like the Iron Man changing scene, you know, when he mm-hmm. walk, and the, the yeah. things will do it for you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Or like, sci- <laughs> like I guess like this is more sci-fi, you know, like yeah, but what's it, gonna happen? it's it's a good kind of speculating. Like you're right about the you know other the things that we all like the human have designed, but they like conform to human. But we have to conform to space. That's that's I think an issue. I think my pushback is we have to conform to architectural space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. I I mean like we never we never think about that. We we don't mm-hmm. even try to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the architect itself doesn't really like. It's the architect doesn't use the technology available to mm. him or her. What what is the very first thing that comes to your mind? Like yeah. something that we should be using in architecture, but we don't. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with climate change. Okay. Right. Like, the most that. I mean, you should have it so that like your climate is controlled, so you don't spend so much money on. Right. It. Right. On I feel like no. I, I think it already exists, but it's just it, it's like for the elites, you know, like those expensive. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's cheap. It's it's not, <laughs> it's not cheap. Like I say, like oh, this is like ten thousand dollars. So it's cheap considered right, in a right. million dollar building. This is like a fifty or forty dollar <laughs> thing that you just buy and plug That's in. true. That's true. And this is yeah. a small, small thing, right? It's true. Yeah. There are already things that happen, but they have stopped. Like look at elevators. Like space changes to fit the person, mm-hmm. right? And escalator does it as well. Right. Right. But we have agreed that that's all we want to do. Or the next one's a sliding door, like a, a automatic automatic sliding door. Right. You right. stand in front right. of it, yeah, it, it, it opens. Changes, yeah. Right. And I think it's with what we have, it's possible for us to code it so that every door is a sliding door. But it knows when to open, when you need to open it. Right? You can easily design a sensor that knows that when you reach the hand, open the door. It's true. You can yeah. design a sensor to be like, well, I know that this person is the owner of this unit. So yeah. I... I mean, there's a lot of things that we can imagine that other people are imagining for us. Who is designing the city of the future? It is not an architect or urban planner. It is Uber, it's Facebook, it's um, whatever big tech company. Hmm. And they will control how it will be. Right? Uber is redesigning our transport. And we, and we as the architectural designer are letting them do that. <laughs> and that's a shame. It is, yeah. We are the ones that are supposed to be trained to do it, but we have right. given up control because we've given up te- the power of technology. Mm. So, like, if an engineer comes in, now it's kind of like engineers saying, like, okay, your building has to fit my technology. Mm-hmm. But actually, yeah. the designer should be like, I know what technology I have, so I can design. Mm. That's interesting. If, let's say, we brought us back 50 years mm-hmm. in the past, like, could we not build the same kind of buildings we did today? Mm. That's a good point. We, I mean, there are obviously some changes in like construction, uh, yeah, like but, different materials, yeah. stuff, but that's not something that architect considers. Yes, yes. Like, like, what is a new material today that we don't know? Let's say like a glass brick that we made of, like a polycarbonate. It, like, okay, like they existed for maybe ten years now. Do you know Peter Testa from Sayop? Peter Testa. Yeah. What do you do? I think he was. Uh, was it him or someone that did the carbon fiber tower? Did he? I, some side dude. Wait, it is built? No, he, he proposed it and then almost got built and then he got a lot of like hype for it because like it was coming from the building, you know? Like things okay. like that is something like we should we could think about. Mm. But a lot of things we're not really we're not controlling 
the use of technology within the architecture. Right. Which is a shame. It is a shame. And Interesting point. Yeah. And eventually, Uber, Facebook, Apple, mm. Google, they will control what the building will look like, and you will have no choice about it. Mm. It's like earlier when we talked about how there will be a computer that like, designs the space for you. That's going to happen. And but not by us. Not, and you won't have a say about it, right? And you won't have to, you won't be able to have a say on it if you don't right. know how to use the technology. Yeah, yeah. We don't even know what the latest technology is, mm-hmm. and we don't know how to pl- apply it to architecture even. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like like you 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 don't read architecture magazine if you know the latest and greatest. Technology. <laughs> Maybe there's one page on it. The new newest the most that Maybe. is on the back page, and you right, skip it. Right. But in the cars, like, like oh man, like the new Ford yeah. has like this fuel injection thing that makes your car goes like five times faster or something. You like. I want that. Okay, here's one thing. I think that, okay, the most recent, I would say the recent, not really recent, but recent, um, technological involvement in architecture is 3D printing. That's about it, I think. Like 3D printing houses, you know. E- well, my, my, <laughs> then my pushback is that, why can't you, like, how is it transforming? The it's not transforming. <laughs> is it, no, no, it has how? nothing got to do with your proposal. No, 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 no. Not, it's just, not transforming it's just, in space, but transforming in the context. It doesn't conform to human, like you, like you, you thought it's a problem, but, but I think, well, well it's a step that... <laughs> like, like, no, 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 like, the example I gave for, like, the elevator, like, is the 3D printing on the same level it's it's definitely not but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't change just the entire like it, it it doesn't curate your experience but like still it's a more of a construction site just like the material you know like it's just a way to build you know actually i would say that the closest one we have is probably the automated sliding door mm. <laughs> that's kind of sad it's, Those, it's no, they probably it, existed for like 70 years now but it's pretty, it's it's still cool. It is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's it very is good. It's yeah, futuristic yeah. in its own way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you don't think enough about it. I mean, there's other cool stuff as well. Like um, most of most of them do with accessibility as well, mm. right? Like there's the the wheelchair elevator. That's right, cool. right. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It does open up a new world. Right. Wait, let me think of architecture that has like transformable parts that like at least. Like you said, like a moving wall, let's say. There are. There are, right? But there I, I, I can't I can't pick point one because that they're not is a good architecture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why is it not even treated the same way? Because you, you know, it's like, just... who, okay, if you went to the GSD right now, I mean, okay, let's say you, you gave a lecture in the GSD about moving stuff. Uh-huh. They'd be like, why are we listening to a product presentation? <laughs> right? Well, is this a lunch and learn? Like, why am I... Well, but, what kind of salesman is giving this talk? But see, you have a good point though. Like, why can't architecture uh, conform to human instead of us conforming to every single architectural space? See? It's but on the other hand, a lot of, I would say a lot of like, the star architects enjoy the fact that architects can conform people. See, it's a it's a very... Like, they, they, they like saying that, oh, my space can... You can experience it because of the way that They say is. that it's curated for our experience, but then... I, no, 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 not that it's curated for experience, in that the architecture forces the individual to change. You think so? I, think so. I mean, there's some experiences that cause it that way, right? Look at Scott's um, Tower Beef Museum. Like, it changes the way that you see it's true. things. It's true. But I'm talking about, like, let's say, um, uh, I don't know what's a good example. Let, let's say a museum that has like certain path that you have to follow, architecturally curated. So it, it just forces you to be in that path, right? There's mm-hmm. no like self-exploration or like difference in experience from this person versus this person. Mm-hmm. They would go through the same place, basically. I think another thing you have to know is that, I mean, these kind of things happen as well. They're just not automated. I can change the space in your apartment right now by just shifting mm-hmm. my chair, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can move this table, then the same thing will happen. Right, yeah. But it's just not automated. It's not automated, but like, I'm, but see, see, here's the thing. Because humans are cheaper as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, but here's the thing: like the so-called like transformable and space transforming um, mm-hmm. things in architecture. Mostly, it's interior design, like the furnitures. You know, there's a lot of like no, uh, the sun, sun shades. That's true, but like I'm talking about like uh, like like you know those Japan homes, small Japan homes that has like bed that can convert into table, whatever, mm-hmm. like all sorts of things. Yeah, I'm talking about those like that does change the entire experience of the home, but um, it's not, It's not. it feels like we're, we don't have a say in that because we're architects and we're not interior designers, like furniture designers. Like that's also mm-hmm. another discipline that we don't want to cross. So 
So I, I don't know. For me, I think that's an ego that architects have. Okay. Yeah. When they see the shed, they say it's cheesy because it moves. You know, that's an issue. I feel. Yeah. I think movement for the sake of movement is bad. I mean, yeah, of course, of course. But the the sake of the transform, the, the space transforming for another purpose or experience, I think that's good. Like an elevator, that does that exactly that. Yeah. Yeah, but no one, no one's, go, no one's going to give a talk about the. the of, course, of course, of course. <laughs> which is it's sad in its own way. It is really sad. If you yeah. really did come up, if if let's say the inventor of the elevator went to the Bauhaus, no one gives a shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even though that is one of the most transformative architecture elements of our day and age. But, but see, like without like stair, a staircase is a very very important part of architecture. But it is a tool that allows you to experience another space, right? Mm-hmm. But how is it any different than an elevator? You can okay, you can you have more room to design a staircase, but still the purpose of it is is the same, right? You could have more room to design an elevator if you put the effort in the design and quality. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's just it's just different different weight is put on different parts of the building. It's really sad, actually. I I, I didn't think about this. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is because you kind of brush off as gimmicky. 